So from this tutorial onwards, we'll really start to see more YTPMV related topics to these tutorials and how we can create YTPMV style effects in After Effects. So for this tutorial, I just started out with a new project. We're going to import our Old Spice video again, create a new composition from that. Then we'll trim this down to just a part of the footage by hitting the alt left bracket and alt right bracket. And then we'll also create a pre-comp from this footage by hitting control shift C, clicking on move all attributes and hitting OK. And now we just have that pre-comp created with just that section of footage. And we'll just drag that footage all the way to the beginning of our main comp here. We can hold shift to snap it to the edges so we can get it directly at the beginning. So now let's start talking about effects. And if we come over to the effects and presets panel here, which if you don't have, you can go to window, effects and presets. You'll see all these effects we have to choose from. So let's add something simple like brightness and contrast. If we come to color correction, we'll have that effect right here, brightness and contrast. We can drag that onto our footage by just dragging and dropping it. That'll open the effect controls panel over here. If for some reason you don't see this panel as well, go to the window and then below composition near the bottom here, you'll see effect controls. Just click on that one. And in here, we'll see our options for the effect. We can mess with these. We can also enable and disable the effect by clicking on this effects icon up here. Let's add another effect to this. Let's add color balance to it. So another way you can add an effect is just by double clicking on it. And that will apply it to your selected layer. Just as a reminder, all these panels are dockable and draggable to other areas. So let's just say we want to snap it to the side here so we can still see our project panel. We can do that. In this effects panel, we can also collapse these effects so they take up less space. So if we added a lot of effects, that can be useful for just seeing the one we want to see. These effect parameters, we can also see if we come to the layer in our timeline here, clicking on the effects drop down, and we can see all those parameters here. If we wanted to animate one of these effects, we can just click on the stopwatch for it. That'll create a keyframe. We can change the value of this. Play that back. And of course, we can even change the easing of these if we want to, hitting F9, going to the graph editor. The same stuff as any other keyframes you interact with. And if we want to disable all effects on a layer temporarily, we can also click on this effects icon right here. And that'll just disable all the effects we have applied to the layer. And a special thing to note about effects is they all have, in the timeline when you drop down the properties for it, they'll have this compositing options here. Right now you'll just see it has effect opacity and nothing else. If we turn down the effect opacity, of course that'll just turn down how much the effect is used. But if we added, let's say, a mask to this by hitting the G key to enable our pen tool, let's just do a quick rough mask here. We can then click on this plus icon right here for compositing options. And by default, it'll reference the first mask we have. And what you'll see is that effect is now only applied to the mask we've created. So in our masks here, you'll see this is the part we masked out. Let's just change this effect properties a little bit. You can clearly see that the color balance effect is now only applied to the area within that mask. And if we change the type of mask it is from like add to subtract, and that will apply to the effect as well. So now it's using that mask to subtract the area where the effect is applied. So now only the area in the mask is where the effect is not applied. So that's a little more advanced, but I just figured I'd throw it in now because a lot of people I don't think know about that. And it's a really useful feature to have. So we'll just click on the minus button here to remove that. And we'll also delete the mask as well. So now we know how to add effects in 
how to play around with the parameters of them, how to animate them. So we're just going to delete all the effects we have right now. And so really quickly now, I'm going to show you a practical way of how to use these effects to build up another effect. And so this effect you probably have seen throughout quite a few YTPMVs, and I'm going to explain how to do that now. So in our effects and presets panel, we can also search for effects in here. So I'll just type in motion tile, add that to our layer. And so what this first effect will do is it will expand our footage out by tiling it. So what do I mean by that? So if I just drag this layer so I can see the boundaries of it, if I increase the output width on motion tile, you can see that then tiles the layer beyond its boundary point. So if I just reset the transform position of this, uh, we'll set this to 300 for output width. Come back to our effects and presets panel. We'll type in, we'll type in offset here, add that. And so now what offset is going to do is it's going to offset the layer, but in a infinite tiling way as well. And so you may be wondering why I'm tiling it twice, but you'll see in just a second. So we'll just undo that, make sure that's the default value. Now type in transform here, add the transform effect. This transform effect has essentially all the same properties as this, but just as its own effect. So now we're gonna change the scale of this. We're gonna type in forward slash three to divide the scale by three. So now you'll see if we disable motion tile, that's just gonna have the untiled footage that we had originally just scaled down to 33%. If we turn motion tile on, then you can see that's now tiled. And if we offset that, that will infinitely offset that group of three layers that we created with motion tile. So just undo that. And now the last bit to this I'll add is the wave warp effect. Just type in wave warp, add that. And this looks a little messed up right now, but we'll change the wave width to, let's say, 1920 which is our composition width divide that by three and we'll change our wave speed to something like 2.5 and so now if we play this back you'll see we have this kind of wavy film strip uh, to make this a little more interesting we'll animate the offset here so let's go back to the beginning create a keyframe on our shift center of the offset. We'll come down to the layer here and hit U on our keyboard, which will show only the animated parameters on the layer. We'll just drag over here, animate the offset a little bit, go back to the beginning and let's see how that looks. So obviously that doesn't loop if we wanted it the loop, we would change this back to its default value of 960, and then we would just say plus 1920. You see that looks like nothing's changed, but that also means it should loop perfectly. Uh, we will have to nudge, actually, this keyframe over one frame, so that when it reaches that frame there, the end of our work area, it actually won't display that frame, but it will loop back to this frame. So you'll see when I play this back. It loops pretty much perfectly besides the wave speed, which you might have to play around with a little bit. Of course, you can try to get that exact or do the proper calculations to make that loop, but I won't cover that in depth here. But as you can see, we started from just this footage with no effects applied to it, added motion tile, offset, transform, wave warp, and we built up our way to this effect with just one layer and four effects. So that just shows you the power of stacking effects. And we can even create a pre-composition from this whole thing. So if we 
press Control shift c if the Slayer is selected. Type in a name here. We could even, like, duplicate this Slayer. Move it around. And we could even add more effects on top of this. So let's just say we wanted to add, like, a drop shadow to these. Increase that a little bit. Give it some softness. We'll copy that effect. Add to the other layer. And there you go. You can see just how powerful these effects can be used and how the pre-comps can interact with these to make this even more complex. And it just opens so many possibilities of what you can do with this kind of stuff. So effects is really the heart of After Effects. And there's tons of these effects in here. So my personal recommendation would be play around with these effects. Try to recreate stuff you've seen in other videos. If you can't figure out how to make it, first try doing it yourself, but then if you still can't figure it out, look it up. You should be able to find an answer to it. And that's really the best way to learn about these effects is just playing with them on your own, seeing what kind of things you can accomplish, using other videos as reference, etc. So now we've really gone past majority of the complexities of the interface and learning about what pre-compositions are and, and how we can add effects to those pre-compositions. So now really all there is to talk about is just the other types of layers there are in After Effects. A little bit more about what these layer switches do over here. And then we can just talk about how to render out our video of After Effects. And then finally, I'll cover an example of my workflow for creating a YTPMV. And in that workflow, we'll be able to see how everything we've learned so far is used in a real typical scenario.